Seismic in Motion is the CAGC's premier annual event. This one-day field trip shows all aspects of the seismic operation in a single location. In 2005, Seismic in Motion was hosted in Fort St. John, B.C. Such an event takes months of pre-planning and encompasses many contractors who donate their people, time, and effort to make it a success. I am Annette Block, I'm with the Oil and Gas Commission. Size of Promotion is a great opportunity for industry, the public, and government to get together and educate themselves on the size of industry in general. Safety on such an interactive field trip is paramount. Participants were bussed in from the town in order to maintain control of the work site. participants were provided with full personal protective equipment. Before embarking on the field trip, everyone was separated into groups and assigned a safety coordinator, who then briefed them on the potential hazards of the area. Uh, safety is a big uh, concern in this particular industry, so we'd like to orient you to the site. The rest of the day was spent observing demonstrations of various aspects of the seismic operation. Well, let's follow me. We'll follow me. My name is Rob Fraser, I'm a uh, loss control coordinator. Seismic and Motion Tour, uh, we're providing coordinators, uh, basically tour guides to tour on the site. Our role mainly is to ensure that the participants uh, are aware of the hazards on this site, so at the end of the day, everybody goes home safely. The uh, Seismic and Motion field trip is a great opportunity for uh, participants who wouldn't normally get an opportunity to get out in the field and see the seismic operations. One of the initial on-the-ground aspects of the seismic operation is the survey. In today's world, a great variety of digital mapping techniques are used in order to survey in the lines and the source points. This includes highly accurate global positioning equipment. The second phase of the seismic operation is the line cutting. This ranges from hand-cut lines through to mulch lines, and in some cases, bulldoze lines are still required. Prior to any line cutting, pre-flagging may occur in order to assist the line cutting crews. Hand-cut lines are often the least intrusive in the forest. However, as a labor-intensive function, they can have the most safety concerns. Said my brother was about a year old. They were cutting line from Willow Flats to Murray River over the mountain with an eight-man crew back then. It was uh, two guys, two cutters, two servers, a cook, a hunter, a wrangler. Years ago, they used to cut without steel-toed boots. They used to go to work with uh, wraparound slippers and rubber. Enough people uh, lost their feet and trees slipped off the stumps. <coughs> crushed their feet so they developed a steel tool too. Then they, people were cutting their legs and they developed uh, the chainsaw pants that you see up there. It's, uh, we've come to an age where safety is, is important. It's, uh, my life's more important than the tree. Mulchers are a piece of equipment that have evolved from the original line cutting equipment, the bulldozer. Mulchers come in various sizes, each of which cut different line widths. The more mass you have to chew, the longer it takes you. So with avoidance now, we try and avoid all the big trees. The benefit of mulchers is that they are able to meander 
taking out scrub brush and small trees while leaving merchantable timber intact. As well, they do not damage trees along the edges of the line and they leave behind only a biodegradable mulch. So I just wanted to show some of the seismic line that's been created with a mulcher here. This is some of the mulch, some of the debris that's been left behind from the mulcher after it's made its pass through here. One of the benefits of using a mulcher is we actually just mulch down the trees to create our seismic line. So with a mulcher you can actually steward your line to the pretty much the exact width of your equipment. So if your seismic drills are four meters wide, you can actually cut a line exactly four meters wide and reduce your impact. So we found with the, uh, the mulchers, they actually reduce the uh, surface duff disturbance and it's just been a real benefit to the industry for the last couple of years. The third phase of a seismic operation is the shot hole drilling. Depending on the line widths and terrain, there are different types of drills requiring varying widths of lines. Larger units can be used in easier to access areas. A typical shot hole won't be much larger than three inches in diameter and may vary in depth from 20 feet to 60 feet. For difficult to access areas, more compact rigs can be brought in by helicopter. These heli rigs may be controlled by the operator walking behind the unit, or in some cases, they may have to be moved by helicopter from shot point to shot point. Once the shot holes have been drilled, the explosives are loaded by the crew. Then, a hole plug is placed partway down the hole in order to ensure that the energy of the explosive blast is directed downward. In some cases, a small amount of bentonite is used as a sealant, with the remaining space being filled with natural drill cuttings. Hi, my name is uh, Mike Malin. I'm with the uh, Forestry in Das Creek Peace District, and I'm the Oil and Gas Liaison. And I'm Rod Krollantner, Operations Manager with the Ministry of Forests, also of the Das Creek Peace Forest District. The uh, seismic in motion tour here today has been a real positive experience so far. Uh, I think it's given me a sense, or a better sense, of the whole geophysical industry, different aspects, uh, right from land use uh, issues to dealing with uh, the various different activities that are associated with the uh, uh, seismic program. So I think I've learned a th few things from today. Uh, speaking for myself, as uh, I'm, a, I'm a retired helicopter pilot, I used to work either directly or indirectly with seismic. And to see how it has advanced uh, from 1970 until uh, now, it's just uh, I hope just how it's changed in the last 10 years. The most important phase of seismic is the recording aspect. Cables and geophones are placed in the ground in order to receive the vibration echoes from the energy source. This is probably the most important piece of equipment that we have. What that is, inside this casing is a magnet that's mounted on the spring. If you shake it, you can feel it's loose. When you blow up a dynamite shot, when there's a big vibrator that shakes the ground, this is what collects that vibration. Using specialized personnel, geophones can be placed on virtually any terrain. During the recording process, a vehicle containing highly specialized equipment is used, commonly referred to as the doghouse. From this recording truck, personnel control the sequence of blasts and record the resulting data that the geophones capture. 